The broadcast Already is now late. starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the weekly uh, Niantic Studio Group meeting. Uh, today is uh, Monday, the 13th of January, 20, uh, 2020. <laughs> wow. Uh, myself and John are your, uh, your hosts here today. Uh, as always, any queries or questions or ideas, solutions, please feel free to... Um, Open the mic and uh, sorry, raise your hand. We'll get the microphones opened and we'll cover the uh, the content accordingly. Um, we'll quickly start with updates. The docking pane update, which we discussed last week, is coming along quite nicely. Um, that hasn't gone out into beta yet. Uh, just fine tuning a couple of things, but it is in uh, it, it it is in live in applications, not live sorry, out not but basically it is in applications and being used for testing in health and it's performing touch wood very, very nicely. So uh, it's, it's progressing nicely. It's not out in beta. I hope to get it out in beta very, very soon. And then obviously pending that uh, out to uh, out to everybody. That will be quickly followed by the, uh, the report control uh, update as well. Um, one good news actually which i forgot to mention i don't think we mentioned uh in last week's updates and it's to do with docking pane and it's to do with report control and that is the saving and command bars actually for that matter it's the saving and restoring of your layouts um if you remember in the past we don't do the saving and restoring and instead you do uh let's just look in here basically uh, this is a this is the docking pane. So basically you would uh, historically go on to here. You would have some kind of table where you would store your layouts. Uh, again, this we're well, just waiting for that. Uh, it would be for your command bar, your docking pane, your report control, your task panel for that matter as well. And you would normally go to save and restore. You've got a, a true or false here, a tick, and you say what variable. Back with compatibility, it's still going to work for you, so nobody's going to break any code. But what you find in the old version, or the old way of doing stuff was, you would have to say which variable in a table within your dictionary, something like lay saved layouts. Here's that structure, so procedure name, control, and the layout. And this would be your own table. And then when it wanted to find and replace fields so you find or insert or, or whatever it would have a series of method calls fetch a record insert prime and update they're still going to work for you so no code is going to be broken but we're going to now change it and basically for all of the templates which have this type of uh, option available to you this will become a drop down list zero eg off will uh, will still be will basically be um, not in use not required one will be your uh, as you've got it now which will be basically uh, manually uh, perform the save and restore but there will be an extra option which will be uh, basically automatically do the save and restore for you and what that will do is it will write all the save and restore code so you won't have to worry about fetching the record, inserting, priming, so on and so forth. The template, what well, the class is going to have its own uh, file structure. And on the global uh, extension, you will specify the particular parameters you want to use for your global saving and restoring. So that's it, really. You're just going to specify it once at the global level and uh, turn it on when you want it to be turned on. So hopefully you find that uh, a bit of an easier approach for all your saving and restoring. I presume, John, in your new product, are you supporting the save and restore? I am not because I didn't want to do all this extra work. Oh, well, you, you won't have to. Yeah, so it will make it a lot easier because, um, yeah, it, it, it's, it's the same code which goes into lots and lots and lots of places. Historically, I've never wanted to do your data I.O. for you, but through listening to yourselves, listening to users, uh, it does seem that you want the um, an, an easier approach. So if we leave it backwards compatible so you can do it yourself, uh, we will give you the option to for where the template does it automatically for you. So you'll still be able to store your settings at a user level, 
and a procedure level, of course. There'll be the global settings where you'll say what your 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 global user ID is, that kind of thing, for, for the logged in user, if you're using it to that degree. Um, but very simple. Yeah, so those uh, those will be docking panes will get that new, the, the first 12 that update, closely followed by the report control. And then the others will follow suit. Any questions on that? Looks good to me. No, that's good. No questions so far. This could be um, this could be one of the, the shortest on record at this rate. <laughs> um, John, you, your yes. product, which I, I I didn't get to uh, I didn't get to see on Friday, and uh, and and the thing is I was in the office, but uh, I was just snowed under, so I couldn't even get to get to see it. So I do want, I'm going to watch that back after this webinar. Uh, but you need a, a URL to uh, query correct yes so your url i can show it on here because it will be a public facing uh, ignore obviously the json content this is just me playing about with stuff coming back so, so totally ignore this but the thing you will want will be that niantis.com slash api slash product versions dot php okay okay now just let me take a quick look at the parameters that you will probably want okay just check the security here da, 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 da. okay parameters which i'll probably uh, allow you to put in will be we, we said uh, there would be two, the um, the ID and the password, correct? Correct. Okay, I'm just trying to desperately find. Let me just open something up. Won't be one second. Okay. So it will be um, user ID, capital U, capital I, uh, capital U, capital ID. Yes, yeah, so a user ID. Okay. And pass WD, capital P, capital WD. They're the two uh, parameters that you'll uh, you'll have to pass into us. Right, what's it, so what's the second one again? Uh, pass WD, so password. Okay. WD is should caps. really uh, uh, talk about hashing that to be fair, rather than sending it plain text, which is not. Uh, you know, we we could allow it plain to start with, but um, it would be better if we come up with some kind of hash for it to be to be truthful. But let's 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 get about let, let's see about getting that working first. That makes sense. The only difference you want, the the two parameters will be optional. So if you don't pass them, you will just get a JSON string returned, uh, JSON object, I should say, returned with all the uh, the items in. Actually, it's just really a JSON array you, you require into it, thinking about it. And then the user ID and password gives you your own specific. Yeah, product. because basically there's some things. That, well, you still get the full product list. Uh, so it will always return you the full product list, but um, you've got things like expiry date and expiry version. Now, if oh, you've okay. specified your user and uh, user ID and password, then uh, you will basically uh, you'll get it more fine tuned to yourself. And if you don't, then you don't. <laughs> do you do you need to send the password? I mean, do you, for this kind of information, do you just need the user ID? So you just actually, that? yeah, yeah, you wouldn't need that. Thinking about it, you wouldn't need that at all. Just to, for, well, actually, no, I think I still would. Only from the point of view is then you get to, you know, you don't really, you don't have to be too creative to start querying other people's data. True. I'm just, you know, is that the kind of data that's sensitive or not? Especially if you encrypt the uh, user ID later. But if the user IDs are sequential, then yeah, it wouldn't be too hard to. Yeah. You know, so. so as long know, as it doesn't return the, the user ID's name. But it's fine. I mean, whatever you want to do, I, you know, I just always try to 
Yeah, we will we will come up with something, you know, basically to protect it because it should do, you know, in, in fairness. Sure. Uh, but while we're devving it, I'll leave it as open before it goes live. Then I will um, basically ask you to, I don't know, maybe just uh, wrap it in an MD5 hash, something like that. Okay. So something to uh, no, nice and simple. Yeah, I take it using string theory for things, for things like that. Yes. Oh well. Shame on you, you should be using uh, Chillcat uh, String Builder <laughs> and uh, the uh, Crypt libraries. But no, no, joking aside, uh, yes, of course, uh, we'll, you know, the, we'll make it nice and simple because the tool set make it simple for us, of course. But uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we will encrypt what's coming in and then we'll decrypt it on the website. Just to be on the safe side. But yes, basically, so you can expect that... Um, this afternoon slash tomorrow afternoon um, cool. and you'll be good to go at that. No, the, this will give you the products, but we, uh, the download part, we're, we're not up to that part yet. Uh, oh, okay, yeah, product versions, we did say, yeah, sorry, there was four. I'm just looking at my notes here now. Yeah, there was. Well. For the, for the download, you will definitely need those two parameters. Let's get this one first okay. working first. The download ain't too okay. bad, actually, because there's already a, a script in there. I can just modify that script to work via the um, uh, via the API. So that isn't too bad, because uh, as you log into the members area of the, uh, the portal, of course, it lists whether you have got a download link or not. And then if you do, if you do click that download link, um, it re-verifies you just in case you've kept the link from, uh, you know, you've kept hold of the link from uh, an ex before you expired, that kind of thing. So it revalidates you just to make sure. So, um, so yeah, so we can just take that logic and put it into the API of the download. Okay. So. Yeah, one of the things I showed on Friday was how it um, it gets all the lists and all the data, all, you know, it gets all the products down and everything like that and figures out which ones you own. It looks in your um, template folders for each version of Clarion that you've got registered in the program. Mm -hmm. And then it checks for templates that, you know, known a known template associated with a known product. It sees that that's there and then it knows that you own it. So that's how it does that. And then it goes and um, downloads all the installs or now it does all the cape sauce. It'd be nice if it could do all the Noyantis. So they were just sitting there waiting for you. So you just say, I need to install this now, and off it goes. It doesn't yeah. have to you know, download on demand or anything like that. And then you have a, um, it keeps all of the installs in separate folders named after the version that was downloaded. So you've got a history of all the installs as well on your cool. hard drive. So Brilliant. Pretty, yeah. yeah, very nice. Very nice. Cool. OK, well. Um... We'll get the let's get the list working first. Like I say, this afternoon slash tomorrow okay. afternoon, um, and then once you're happy with that, then I'll do the uh, the download link, and then all we've got to do there is really just pass you a, a modified installer, which just takes command lines, uh, pro variables. So I'll just work those out. That is you know a laborious task, but it's not a difficult task. So that's that's at least that's good news. Sorry if I sound bunged up. I'm still getting over a uh, cold, which uh, which is uh, bugging me, to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, well, we've got no questions so far, which is a bit weird, to be fair, which is good, though. You know, if, there's, uh, if there is nothing, that's, I don't know if it's a good or a bad sign. A not. quick question. Maybe. Yeah, by the way. Um, my D-Track stopped working. Oh, okay. I wonder if you could um, just test, see if your example still works. See if course, it's still, yeah. still doing, doing what it's supposed to do. Let's take a look. It looks to me like they had some API changes, but I don't know that that would have broken old stuff. But I, I have not I looked. Demo. I think I saw something about um, some changes coming up, actually. Didn't think it was yet, though. Yeah, I was just curious if, uh, how this was going to, if this still worked, I guess. That's what I was curious about. Let's take a look. Yeah, 
and if it doesn't, then that obviously uh, that fix will have to get out sooner rather than later. It's like it's like two and a half months to the CIC twenty twenty. Ooh, to see that update date. Q invoices, better take a look at that. Yes, yes. Um, got lots to do as well. Okay, D track. There we go, D track. So um, no collections. What about vehicles? Can I query myself? Yep. The vehicle, okay. That's good. Let me start the application. Um, because it's been a while. To be fair, so you can see I was at Walt Disney World last time we did this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So I'm logged in. Uh, no, I do believe I. Uh, well, let's create let's create a, a delivery. Okay, so I've just put a delivery in, and I've got the uh, the phone there. It looks like it's working. Uh, the, actually, the um, got no jobs assigned to today. Oh yes, in in progress. Uh, less than a minute ago. Okay. So I shall take the job. Um, let's just check. Should be okay. Take a photo. Capture signature. Okay. So yeah, so that's now been delivered. And that's submitted. So if we take a look at that, that's delivered. That's good. Yeah. Yep. And proof of delivery photo. No, not there yet. Yep. Don't know if anybody watches uh, Peaky Blinders. But if you do, <laughs> yeah. you will notice that this is uh, the Shelby Brothers. Uh, Mug, so but yes, well basically, so the uh, it's looking good to be fair, John. That uh, yeah, it is looking fine. It is, uh, and there's my squiggle. Sure. Okay. Well, I'll go back and look and see what I maybe I just broke something in mine somehow. Let's just see if it's got my yep yeah Ada Lovelace House Urban Road that's us. I know I'm using like depots, and I think that might be has something to do with the was it elastic routing thing that they're doing. Right. I know they, they've got some plans changed uh, to do with, I think it's only really to do with security. Um, so they have got some plans changed, but that's not due until I think the end of March. It's around about CIDC 2020 time. So <laughs> I'm not expecting, yeah, uh, uh, yeah, I'm not expecting it to uh, catch us out yet. And there'll be plenty of updates released before then, obviously. So, so that's a good sign from there. Um, yeah, by all means, fire over uh, any content that you, you, you want me to check it here and have a quick look. Okay. Just check there's no... Just, nothing, this is no one of those things I haven't looked at. Yeah, I haven't looked at it for a long time either. and <clears throat> So I just have to go back through the code and see if I just missed it. I know in one of the large applications that we work on um, that uh, this is in use daily, you know, uh, by... Uh, a lot of installations, as in the hundreds, and and you, you know they've not reported anything. It's just a, a message from yeah. DTRAC themselves where they were saying they're enhancing their security. I don't think it'll actually catch us out, but of course, prudence, we will we will test it and check we are compatible before then. So okay, right. I will uh, dig a little deeper. 
Okie dokie. Okay, uh, still no questions. What? Mm. Oh, you know what? Okay, so show me. Um, you were you were chiding me for not using groups. Oh yes. Uh, oh right, on the control. Board control. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so what I'm doing is I'm I'm taking yes. I mean maybe I'm 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 missing something here, but what I what I typically do is I execute a SQL statement that fills up a queue. Yep. And then the queue fills up the report control. So and and, that, and then I'm just adding them in row by row and then Okay. You know, I, I add the row and I don't I don't update it until the end when I populate it. See, that's fine. Um but it's just So where does the group come into this to this part, I guess? Did we do it on this is one we did a few weeks ago. Let's just take a quick look if it is on here. I guess I wasn't seeing where a group gets um, defined. So maybe I just missed that part. Okay, okay. Uh, manual load. Okay, so you, you've got the equivalent of manual load, okay? Right, yes. That's fine. So you've got that. Uh, you still have the related record turned on, you know, should you need it, because that your data is still coming out of one particular table, is it not? At the heart of it. Um, yeah. Yeah, there's, there's like a, a, a primary table, and then you could have a quote joined in, you know, secondary data, but uh, but the primary. So the related data, sorry, the related record would find you uh, the record if you clicked on it. So over to this now. So what you can do is probably on the options. Yeah, options, rows. And you've got here automatically declare local group structure. Okay. Now, if you're using the file view loaded, this would automatically automatically be done for you. So, but we're not. So, let's just take a quick look at the columns. That's a bad example. That's a really bad example. Just trying to see what 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 else we've got. Manually load. Options, rows. I've chosen a very poor example for you. We just find a, a good one. Load Q enhancer, Q load, maybe something like that one. I, it's just that I know we, we we covered this. Okay, manually load. Let's go to options, rows, declare a queue. Right, so we must have some columns. So I've got some columns here. Customer ID, name, telephone number. Chance you, you you'll have something similar, which will form right. the, the content of your report control, of course. Now, what I'm going to do is because we've got that ticked, okay, it will create you a group automatically. Perhaps if we just go into the source. Nope. Try and find where it is. There it is. Data roll group. So it takes the name, because of course you could have multiple report controls, it takes the name of your control, underscore row data group. And it creates you, automatically creates you a record ID, and then whatever columns you have. Okay, so that is your group structure. And then if I take a look, we can see here, there's a some rough and ready code, so it's probably on the screen somewhere. Let's just take a look. Yeah, this is what I'm thinking of. Um, this just goes through, populate some data into a queue. You're not going to need that. You've already got your queue populated after your query, correct? So you would correct. want to delete all rows mm -hmm. with a false, so you don't repaint, of course. Go through your queue. 
clear the group structure, prime it, and then call the add with that as your last parameter. Okay. 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 Now, certain things you can do. Uh, I know that you've put a request in. I will make sure it's in the next build. If we looked at this uh, group structure, so we'll just go back to that source code. And this is good for over over through here. We look at this structure, customer ID. We'll, we'll stick with customer ID. Okay. So it's those four fields of, of our group structure. Now, if you use, using a, a Clarion list and you put an icon on there, it would write you an extra field in that queue or that in that structure to say uh, underscore icon no. So you've got the same here. So I'm going to go to our customer ID, go to our icon. So I'm going to say that we need an icon for this. Now we'll just go, I don't know, default to icon. Actually, you do something like so. Probably overkill because this is actually manually done. So this is a bad example. But the point I was trying to show here is we have got our record ID, our customer ID. Then it's created you a customer ID icon. And that you would set to uh, the particular icon you needed. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. I know that you sometimes use uh, especially for say clarion dates you've got the row cell caption and the row cell value so right i'm going to give you that same option just like here so for example you would get find some space where i can type we ticked it there to say we need an icon and it changed the structure accordingly i'm going to give you something like uh something along the lines of underscore value and Basically, uh, that will be via a tick box. So in the column definition, we will say that uh, the value differs from the caption. And if that's the case, it will create you the extra uh, the extra, uh, the extra the extra field. Caption being the default. Uh, okay. The default option. Actually, no, do you know what? I think it will be the, I think, I don't know. It'll be one or the other. So um, it Ca might be that. Caption I, makes more sense to me. I always caption. think the value going into the cell and then the caption is like over top of that. Well, I think from the... Like an overriding thing. Yeah, and I think from the controls point of view, that's that's how it works. If you haven't got a caption, the value is taken. Right. So from memory, right. I think it works that way around. So it makes more sense that we allow you to override the caption, which is ultimately... Yeah, a clarion date being the perfect example. We are oh, going to say seventy nine thousand, but we're not now. We're eighty thousand, aren't we? So, you know, eighty thousand and eighty thousand and five, for example, uh, possibly today's date. So you want the value to be the raw um, data, eighty thousand and five. So when you sort on it, they all come in the correct order. But you want the caption dis to display nice, you know, today's date, the thirteenth of January. Thing, so on and so forth for that kind of thing uh, so i will give you the option probably it will be on the column definition because that's the obvious place for for such a thing so hypothetically something like this um we have got data content and i'll probably put it on here So what's this now, this, uh, now you set the size of the of the uh, group variables to 501. Well, here's the thing. I actually created them as likes. Um, uh, was it likes? Yeah, I think I did likes. But um, oh no, if you specify them, so if it's if it knows where it's getting them from, say for example uh, this one here. We look at that that group structure, and where are we? Um, there's our report control row data group, and it defines them as it would expect. So as you've got them defined in your dictionary, it will do that. The icons it puts as a 101, which should be long enough. And if it's a totally local column, uh, a, 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 yeah, a local column, which is the equivalent of a local field in uh, in a Clarion browse, then it just defines it as a C string 501. I did use Ennis and 
it caused an issue. And I'm not sure why, to be honest, but it did cause an issue. So I had to come up. I can I can make that a global parameter if you like, so that you can specify that size. Yeah, and I know my rec IDs get even longer than 101. They're um they get really they can get really long. Right. Because I was build I was building a tree and I was using the, the GUID uh, yeah, it's like of what was going there, but then I was appending the GUID right above it. So I put dashes between them so I could walk back the tree, I guess, if I needed to. Yeah. So if I was deep, maybe four things, it'd be 16 times four would would be how, I guess that's still not 101, but it, it could get long. I don't know if it could be over 101. Well, all locals should come in at 501. The only 101 would be the icon name. Uh, well, the rec ID here is 101 for some reason. Oh, sorry. Yes, the rec ID. Um, ah, that's probably a limitation of the class itself, though. Yeah, oh, really? okay. yeah internally, the class will only use 101s. Oh, so I'm, I guess I'm lucky I've, I've stayed under that size. Yeah, I mean, we can check that. That is a lot, I mean. Let me take a quick look. I'm sure I've got the report control open on the other window, which I have. Uh, and they are, yep, uh, the IDs are all C-string 101s. Okay, okay, that's fine then. So that's fine. I guess I haven't hit the limit, otherwise I would have been like, what's going on? <laughs> so, yeah. If that needs to be increased, you know, it's not the end of the world. Really not the end of the world. No, I think we're fine. We're fine. So. But, uh, but yeah, so we will have a, an override of the, the, the caption. So uh, we're trying to basically put as much into the template as, uh, as we can so we have to write the littlest amount of code. Yeah, I, one thinking... thing I like about the report control is that you can store a bunch of data in those cells and just hide it so I can have all sorts of things. Oh, definitely. Um, kind of tucked away. A good tip, which I use, let's uh, pass on the whole point of uh, sessions like this is uh, for tips and tricks but uh yeah you can have your own so you've got some these are coming straight from a table that's great they've got the exclamation in front so it's a an optional field we've got lc web which is a local column local lc local column web and that's just going to be calculated that's no problem so on and so forth we've got that um but it would appear in a field picker now i would want that to appear in the field picker but if you didn't then you do have an option uh, in here. Da, 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 da. Including field picker. Now you can turn that off mm. and that really okay. becomes truly uh, uh, just nothing more than a data holder. So then using the report control to hold uh, lots of data which you might need to for processing, but you don't want the user to be able to see it. So it just gives you an, another storage vehicle for related data on that particular row. Oops. I've been uh, making a field called properties and I, and I put in, I put XML stuff in there that has all sorts of information about that mm -hmm. particular record, you know, first name, last name, and I have a whole bunch of stuff there. So 501, eh, it's probably okay. Okay, but, well the 501 can be, um, uh, we can put that as a global variable. Because some people might think that's too uh, too large for uh, for, the, for for their requirements. True. So I can put that as a global variable, so the user can fine tune and just say what's your default uh, local column size. They might choose C three one hundred one or or fifty one or hell ten. <laughs> but you get the idea. They can just set it themselves. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So so yeah, uh, I'll just default it to uh, C three five hundred one, and um, then they can override it. So that'll make it. Uh, totally flexible for themselves could you override it on on a like on this screen on the column screen yeah yeah on the data the data content absolutely no reason why we can't put it onto this definition here because that would be nice that i could have a column that's had to be 2000 for some reason but the rest could just be 20. the rest of thing yeah Yes, that kind of makes sense. Now we've just spoke about it. A bit obvious, to be fair. <laughs> I kind of, <laughs> yeah. But yes, uh, why why not? Um, so we'll have a default, and the default will be on here will be uh, use global default. 
uh, but if you don't use that, then you you are manually overriding it. Yeah, and then I can take advantage of that that whole group thing. And in the group, you think is that's the fastest way to add records in? Yes, definitely. Yeah, I see massive yeah. speed increase uh, on that because ultimately, what happens when we uh, just run this? I can't remember where we put this because it was something we were just playing about with. I don't know, don't know where I put the example, but basically, yeah, um, we can see here there's one, two, three, four, and another, what? five there there's nine and the id there's 10 columns now if you were to manually go and create that and set row what you what you actually do is add the row with no um uh, items then it goes through and creates 10 cells for that row then you're going to go in in your code and you're going to go set the value for that set the caption for that and repeat that 10 times over for each row so that's a lot of processing the other way what it does is it says okay create the row we've got to do that that's that creates you a row object and then we create the 10 cells but as we create the cell we actually put the content straight into it so as it's created it's saying create me a cell but with this value in it rather than create me a cell and then set the value and set the caption and so on and so forth so really what we're doing is as the item the, the cell object is created itself it's created with the data in it straight away so, so immediately 10 cells you're coming in a tenth of the time Did, um, I'm, I'm just looking at this screen. So the field picker, I think, is really nice, but it's just so ugly, I can't use it. <laughs> just, I just don't <laughs> like those buttons. They're horrible. I wish they would kind of do something about that. It doesn't follow any theme. It looks like Windows XP type stuff, right? It's just, <laughs> it's just not, it's just that didn't do it for me. So that's put the one in, thing uh, I avoid. Put them in, where are we? Why aren't this connecting? I have been playing about. What's but... what's what's Kojak up to now? Nineteen point something or something. Nineteen like one. They still have, and that thing looks like that. It's like, oh come on. Nineteen <laughs> one. Nice. But uh, agreed. But um, I have the ability to have them there, but just don't um, you know, don't don't put them in uh, there all the time. So there's mine, just folded away. So it doesn't look too bad all of a sudden. And it's docking, it's docking pane, so I can still pick from it. Now that looks a little different style-wise, though. Why is that? Uh, the other one's probably using an old. Oh, let me is it a manifest? Maybe it's a manifest thing that's uh, making it look. Well, that's yeah, also that's told right. to use uh, Office 2016, and the other one is using. Oh, maybe uh, that's a theme. What theme is that using? Office 2010. Yeah. So, the, so the the field picker is following the theme. Yeah. Okay, well, that's not as, as bad as I would thought. I would so if we that. take that there and let me pin that out. Yeah, that's much better on the right there, on the that screen. Yeah. So yeah, so you yeah, could do that. Much better. And put, um, uh, yeah, yeah, put, the, put it in a little uh, pane so it's hidden away. So the user only ever gets it, you know, uses it when they need to and then carries on. When they need it. Right. Okay. Well, I have to think about that. I don't know if I need it for my what I'm working on now, but that's uh, that opens up possibilities. We put it on on all of ours, and yeah, it just gives it the user. I did toy about whether to put it on a right click and pop it up and so on, but uh, there's a lot of you know, a lot of work to go into that for very little gain, in my opinion. So this was a a, a, a quick measure, uh, which seemed to work. Couple more things. The um, <laughs> see, no one has questions, so I just fill up the time, right? That's okay. The, um, the highlight bar. So I guess you have. Um, I don't know, there's all sorts of things with the highlight bar in Clarion. There's when you highlight it, there's a color. There's when it's selected, it's a, there's a different color. When you lose focus, there's different colors. I don't think we have access to all those things in the template. Uh, lots so added a lot's added in one like, bulk 
lots got added, uh, added, added. Um, just, uh, I'm just bringing the, the class open now. Let's take a look here. That's what I was going to ask and see if you you'd added those extra things in there because I feel like I've had to hand code in the changes yeah. that I want. But I don't want to do it for every everything. There's another one of those things that'd be nice for like in your in the global template I set it and then it rippled down through all the report controls instead of having to set highlights and everything uh, every time. Four color, back color. Yeah, so you've got the get row cell. Should be, let's just do a search for four color. Not those, uh, not those. Highlight four color, highlight back color. Row cell, yeah, get selected four color. Get selected back color. Uh, in line, forget that. Set. Uh, oops. Yeah, so you've got a set selected uh, back color and four color. Um, that that should do the overall role for you. But with the others you're after, because you've got obviously you've got it at the individual, uh, the individual uh, cell as well, so you can override it per cell. But if you just call this, this well, actually that's that just sets it. That should do it anyway for you. So let's just try it. Out. Try it on this one if you like. Well, I'm not sure it's in the template. I guess that's what I was wondering. If it's someplace I can get to it oh, got you. easily that has a color selector and that kind of thing. Uh, Can't remember. Easy enough to put in. It's just the actual calls. Wow, plumbing's gone very slow. Uh, we should come under appearance then. Sorted columns. So yeah, so something like this under the appearance. So selected uh, normal, uh, you know, row, background, foreground, selected, background, foreground, that kind of thing. And have them come from defaults, as in global defaults. Yeah, that would be, that's, that's the thing. I don't want to, I mean, if I've got five report controls on a screen, I don't want to go pick colors <laughs> for every single no, one. No, no, right? you want to do it just at the, the, the overall global level. Right, exactly. Really well. And you do have defaults up here. I don't know if people ever take a, a look at these these defaults, but um, but you do have the defaults uh, option to uh, open to you. Wow, my clarity has gone really slow. I remember we did something with um, the There's, row height. So you've got the data loading. Don't know if anyone looks at that. You got a uh, when to load the data, the initial data that is. Okay. So you've got after initialization, after window open, manual load, and you will have an extra option uh, once the next docking pane is released, saying after uh, after the um, docking pane has docked to the window, so it will integrate with the docking panes. So you'd be able to say after the window's been docked, and if that's the case, then basically then it could call it so basically you can get your windows to open as fast as possible and then when docking panes has taken charge of it then it will go and load your report controls after that so you'll get a new option in there for that uh, and the re uh, you refresh display so if you called uh -huh. add row then it will do it after each row add but if you uh, if you did manual refresh it wouldn't do and then it would wait for you to call the man uh, the populate method Oh, is this a, a global thing then? Huh? No, it's a global, yeah. Yeah, so, you, so you've got that. And of course, you've got a, a, a localized um, override so on each report control, but these are your global defaults. Yeah. So, and we should, you know, there's me going into the class there. I'm just going to look, see if Ben, because Ben's not in today. Um, One be one second. Oh, 
he's not signed them off. Let's just give you a sneak preview. A sneak preview. There's a PDF. No, this is a really old one. Don't want that one. Oh, we're looking at help files here, huh? Yeah, we're looking at uh, a CHM. Yeah. So I went to the methods a second ago, but uh, yeah, really, I could have just gone into here and done a search for a four color and so on. Hmm. Oh yeah, because in, in fairness to Ben, these aren't the signed off ones. So, uh, so I, I can't give him grief on this. But yes, basically, so we have got some, uh, some stuff coming up. Are you going to have this online too, though? They are in free guises. So yes, they will be. Here's Ben completed. I still got put some of my stuff in, but save for the chart. So you will have the CHM. As you can see, the different classes and the methods. And you will have the HTML for online. Nice. So yeah, so we can, uh, so you will have that. And you will have a PDF just in case you wanted a local stored copy. All done with Dr. Explain. I don't know if you guys use it, but it is pretty good. Oh, yeah, it's a pretty good program. Yeah, we, he's been on uh, Clary Live a couple of times. Yeah, so, so yeah. So, yeah, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to paste something in uh, Skype for you. Mm. <laughs> How exciting, huh? <laughs> no, it's just code that I, um, it's how I would like my, Report controls to look, but I don't think these are in the template. So this, I'm just throwing these in here, so you have kind of a. Oh, okay. So yeah, so you basically. Okie dokie. I see. Yeah, so you've got a some text in the font and so on. Yeah. Yeah, if I want to be able to change the font, I don't think that's in the template. And those would be nice in defaults too. I'm kind of in my. It would be nice mode right now. Well, nice. that's okay. It's uh, you know, the golden rule if I need it uh, and so on. But um, I just press the wrong. Yeah, I did. But in here, uh, it would also be nice for me to um, give the users uh, the ability to 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 fine tune this, uh, the font and so on and so forth. So, and I've been asked for tie-ins with any font, which of course is a popular product. Uh, yeah. So, so, uh, yeah. so yeah. Because see, to me, that looks a little crowded, right? It'd be nice to have a little bit larger font or something in the control where it would it could be expanded just a little bit. I yeah, no, agreed. So look a little bit cleaner. I don't know. Yeah, no, agreed. And then it would it would have to uh, manipulate the uh, the minimum size of the accordingly, but that's easy to do. But it's just an equa it's just a, a equation, a formula. Yeah, but right now this is uh, somebody might have to hand code in every report control. I'm not looking forward to it. <laughs> <laughs> this is um, the concept I was mentioning a minute ago. This, uh, you've got a your docking pane. When I selected the patient, it opens this window, which is a, a running on its own thread. So you've got a Clarion window running. Um, so of course that wouldn't be loaded until it's already been docked and opened so that's that's one of the changes which is currently in in progress now so you'll get the window opened faster but then on that window it's also got its own docking pane so it's got command bar across the top and side it's got the report control in a pane it's got field picker in a pane but then it's got related information down at the bottom running in its own pane but this is also a separate clarion window so of course that wouldn't that would open immediately and wouldn't start loading any of its data until such time that it's told to uh, and then basically you just got notifiers going across from one to the other so it looks like it's on the same window but it's not giving us uh oh I've got no data very poor data actually <laughs> So it's all about the speed of getting this, you know, getting the content onto the the the, the uh, screen immediately, for so the user doesn't see any big lag and delay, and then we right. go off and pass the uh, the events across. So when I click here, we know to go and load the relevant data. 
So, and this is even done quite efficiently. So it only loads whichever you're on the active tab. No point in refreshing all the appointments and alerts and correspondence if I'm not clicking on them. But I've cleared all the data out. So these do work. It's just a, a rubbish data. I just, I just had a thought. Mm -hmm. I haven't thought it all the way through, so it could be a bad idea. Okay. But it might be it might be a good idea. So the so I just pasted, um, you know, the code that I just pasted. Yeah, in, right? adding selling the font uh, and so on, and there's other attributes, you know, italic right. and, and so it, on. And, yeah. it, and it's got like right. It says like report control, but it could just as easily be self because I put it into um, where did I put that? The init template settings. Then that could be self, yeah. But but if the okay. using the class name is perfectly fine. It could be self. My thought is in, in the global, if there was a section that said uh, include code or something, included code for this embed, and I could just type this code in and then it would be generated in every report control throughout the whole thing. Is that a, is that a because this is something that's not in your template right now. So I could either wait for your template to put this in there, or I could put this in all my controls manually. The only problem you would have about writing code in the template is template language hates with a passion the carriage return field. So the right. code you put in would look, you'd have to enter it. Let's say you, you know, such and such code line one, instead of normally you do, you know, some code return, some code return, some code return. It would be, you know, some code and then less than 13 greater than, some code less than greater than, you know, less than 13 greater than, some code. So, because you can't use the carriage return, um, the template, you know, what generates, it breaks what's generated. So, you have to use that to less than 13 greater than, which is a, there are weight work, work around and so on and so forth, but um, honestly, it's just not worth it. Um, it'd be better to give you the, the particular functions uh, as in the it default. It would, it would, but you know me, I'm always uh, <laughs> pushing the edges here, right? Going out a little bit further. I don't, I don't know if this is that much further, but you know, I was just, I was just, um, yeah, you're right. There are ways of, around that. I was just using uh, one of Bruce's templates in NetTalk, and you just paste in HTML, and I looked at the code he generated. And he put in the 1310s at the end of each line and watched for brackets and stuff. I was amazed. Hmm. <laughs> I don't know how yes. I did it. There are, there are, there are things, yes, granted, but um, it's a lot of hassle. Um, oh, and... not for me. <laughs> <laughs> it's, not, it's not my hassle. That'd be, that's yours. That's yours. So, no, I, I'd sooner do the, uh, put the actual uh, things in. But that's not to say we can't give you an actual hash include. So you you can actually say okay, you know, there's a source that I want to always be compiled in. So you could have your At own a certain point or something. Yeah. yeah. Because if I if I want you know how it is right if I want to add this now I I wait for you I put it in each one, but it'd be nice if I could just put it in one place and then it was just generated in this spot everywhere, and I could I could knock together a template I guess that does that. Yeah, but it's, yeah, it's to be the object of having a template then. Yes, agreed, of course. It kind of does. I mean, I could write my own, but then I got to, you know, that takes time. So it's just, it's just a thought to give a little more flexibility to the programmer if they want to do something out of the ordinary um, and set one of the code jock things that you don't have. Uh, I'll just probably go hand, with just uh, hand code uh, it and drop it in, right? I'll probably go with an include because then you could have your own little include file and it could be self dot. So it would go into each one of the, uh, you know, we'd have to uh, give you a, a theory. I'm thinking on, on the fly here, but yeah, at the global level, uh, give you a series of embed points, something like uh, init complete. Um, right. Yeah, so something like uh, init complete, um, init template settings, that's a popular one as well. Because uh, mm -hmm. if you think command bars, that would go through and call uh, init template settings inside of there it would go through and call uh create tabs create groups create controls or create command bar create groups you know, so on and so forth that kind of thing but that's all done in, in, in its template settings so we could give you a, an include to go 
at the end of there. We could give you a, a neat complete. Um, that would really, that really would probably handy. be enough, actually. That's yeah. not bad. Do you know, I am going to note. Let me make a note of that. Just one second. It just allows us to kind of, I mean, not everyone's going to do this, right? But for those of us who like to tweak the interface a little. Yeah, so you got that. be a huge help, yeah, to be able to do this kind of thing. Um, then all, so I'm just going to make this all. Um, da, 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 da. And that's not a lot of work on your side. No, it's not at all, actually. Uh -huh. Global um, includes facility. I've got that. Okay. Made a note. Cool. Okay, well, we're up to... Yeah, we better stop minutes. before I keep I keep Yeah, that yeah, keep more work. <laughs> I don't I don't particularly mind that idea though, got to admit. That's that's not bad. So something along the lines of well, the global There's level. a lot of things you there's a lot of things you can tweak on these report controls. Oh there's well not just report control. When I when I'm thinking this, I'm thinking for all the products. So when that gets added right. it'll get that the function will be added into uh, all the products. Because yeah, I think that'd be really that, that sounds template good. language point of view. Um, that tab, uh, no, not that tab. Elements of that tab, this core, core, you know, what changes here, uh, mm -hmm. and so on. Uh, they are done at um, basically a, an include in the template language. They're done at a, a, an overall global level, so that when I change it on one, I change all of the product suite. So we could have a, a new tab which would be included in all of the product suite. And on the new tab would be basically uh, your include source code. Give you a series of uh, uh, basically embed points. So like a tick in it complete uh, in it template settings and the name of the file that you want including, and in it uh, complete and the name of the file that you want including. Could even do something like maybe uh, after the window's opened that kind of thing. I like it. So and then we can just keep. Uh, if I do that in one particular place, so for example, thinking aloud here, but I'll watch this back to remind me. But if I go to the local level now, uh, choose any, don't matter, choose the report control, and I go across to keystrokes and events, those two tabs are actually included from a centralized. Uh, definition like group definition so again I change it for one I change it for all and the processing of that code is also done at that same level so the includes could be done by that same code so it's actually a very simple task to put in laborious because I've just got to mod each template to do it but the whole thing's probably only a couple of hours work believe it or not um, yeah that would be really nice. Raise your hand if you think this is a great idea. Everybody raise your hand. <laughs> everybody raise, everybody, everybody. Alan likes There's it. More. And Mary, yeah, Mary Alan. likes it, but uh, yeah, I reckon Mary's like just in cahoots with you. So I, I know Alejandro likes it. Alejandro's, Alejandro's waving. Waving at you. <laughs> yeah. Frank's the holdout for some reason, but that's it. Okay. So, uh, but <laughs> three yeah. Out of, three out of four, three out of four program, uh, Clarion developers like this idea. 35 percent that's really high <laughs> fine fine okay then consider it done so yeah so basically the global level um uh, and we can build upon it as my, my point being um uh, how i'm going to implement it which is more more for me but but the uh, the point being is once i fine tune it for one particular product then it automatically affects all of the products once it's in which means at yeah. that global level if i add extra uh, prompts and so on to say okay we want to do not just in its uh, template and in it uh, complete it needs to be a point where all of the products share the same in code but all of them you know are built on the same uh, approach and structure so there's a high percentage of the uh, of, uh, of of commonality between them all, which is by design, by the way. It's good practice. So, which means basically, if I give you 
three or four embed points and you go Andy you know what would be really great would be if we could also put some code at one particular other place then I could just change it during these uh, global includes from a template oh, language okay. point of view rebuild the installers and hey presto every product including older ones which have been released would automatically be affected so as long as you're on a version which has got that capability in it then you would automatically uh, just by updating one of your products get that functionality in all of your products I like it and see Frank was out of the room so he his hand was up too so 100% of Clarion developers are in favor <laughs> of this idea <laughs> So I guess it, guess it should be done. Okay. Well, if anyone can think, if everyone likes it, um, I don't want a massive list, but the ones I can think of uh, are the obvious ones in it. So if we think of these, some of these methods. Um, yeah, init template settings for sure. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Uh, the inits are the particular order, but we all know init template settings is a popular one. So a late parent call there, and it probably would these would probably go in at the nine 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 nine, you know, towards the end. So the init template settings would be a good one. The init complete would be a very good one. That's where you know I always tell people to put their stuff and so on. Um, do you know, before the kill might actually come in handy for people if they wanted to put some extra save stuff before it was all uh, killed and destroyed. That's actually not mm -hmm. a, a bad place, to be fair. Mm -hmm. um, lots of these are common process. They're common. Take event, take notify, they're, they're, those are common. So we could put allow you to put code in there, which actually means you could put code in your template, in your applications. Um, not strictly related to just the code job stuff. You could put just general window code in there. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, so I see a lot of flexibility here, really. Mm. Yeah, okay, yeah, consider it done. In fact, if we haven't done anything, you know, if it's not in by next week, we'll, we'll, we'll actually add it. We'll add it next week so you can see it in action. Oh, awesome, that'd be great. So oh, cool. Right, I'm going to wrap up on that. Um, in All fact, right. next by next week, I would actually want the, possibly, as long as the testing goes okay, we report with uh, docking pane uh, to be released. But I, I, I probably also wouldn't mind uh, the build of the report control to be out. Uh, so this could actually be possibly in it. We shall see. We shall see. Shall see. Okay. Then you can uh, you can use the updated program to update the. Of course, and then everyone can be aware that uh, that it's their uh, their new build is available to them. <laughs> exactly. Yep. So looking forward to those APIs. Look at all the work I gave you. <laughs> yes, I know. <laughs> Do you know there's one particular um, uh, one particular thing I do on my installers. I've got lots of Clarion builds. Okay. Um, lots of Clarion builds. Um, one for each version, Clarion 9, Clarion, well, 9.1, .1, Clarion 10, Clarion 11, so on. And then within that, uh, I have, if I'm working on contract work, I'll have a build for that particular contract and for applications. So Tarando, Schedule It, so on, they have their own builds. So I've, at any one time, I've got quite a few Clarion builds uh, on my machine. So when I go to install an update, let's say I put in a new um, FM3, did it earlier today. Uh, I noticed there was a, a December build out of FM3. So I install it, and I'm thinking of your installer here, which would help me, you see. Um, how, would it, how would that work if I wanted to say, okay, I want to update my core Clarion 11, my core Clarion 10, my Clarion 10 schedule it, and my Clarion 11 Tarando. So I want to update four product, four Clarion builds all at the same time with the latest FM3. How would we do that? Okay, well, the, the installs have to run by themselves. I mean, I don't have any way to, to bulk do them because you still have to choose where it's going. Right. You know, there's there's not a way I can pass that in yet. Now, there there might be, there, uh, CapeSoft's kind of checking into it because Setup Builder will let you pass things into it. I was going to change our installers to allow you to do that. 
Yeah, so that so if I could pass in the version that it's going to or the path, I guess is what you really want, right? Yeah. The Clarion path. But you want um, two. You want one for the examples and one for the core Clarion. Right. Exactly. And yeah. we can we could we could do that. You know, we could pass that in. We could you could fill that in uh, as it defaults. Yep. Yeah. Right. So uh, you tell it which version of the Clarion you've got and what their path is. And I like I forgot about the examples, but that's good. That's a good thing to track too. So I'd, I'd make a little change there today. Um, so we'll do your example path too. But if if your setup builder will take those parameters, it would be pretty quick. You know, it would add those. It would take you right through those steps. And I don't know if there's any other decisions you wanted to make as well. You might still have to make some decisions on the installer. But you, you basically go to. Um, well, I guess I guess you could watch the the video. I'm gonna watch it. I'm <laughs> gonna I did watch it on Friday. <laughs> Genuine. I'm I think that explains it pretty well for you. But yeah. it it does break all those things up uh, using the report control. Actually, they're all sorted. Well, you saw it, right? We use the filter and we can break it down into yeah, you know, yeah, Clarion 10 version or that Clarion 10 version. I got to install these things, or I have to install these things and just sort it by this. And yeah, you just run it. Just click yeah. install and all. Because yeah. that's that is a a common task. Like say that that right. that uh, FFP. Yeah. What I currently manually do I run the installer but I install it to a temporary folder and I tell mm -hmm. it that don't register the template and don't do this and don't do that I just want the output of the installer so I want the accessory win accessory libsource win the accessory template win uh, the accessory examples I basically I want the content but I don't want it as part of my Clarion setup uh, and, so right. on. and then I manually go and apply it to each one of the versions that I need to up update and so on. Uh, well, you just give you just give me a, a, a great idea. It'd be nice. If I, I could do the it. same thing, right? Oh, why don't I just why don't I just install it to a temporary folder? And then you could just tag which versions of Clarion you wanted it to go to and, and then go over just copy them all over. Yeah, it's exactly what I do. Uh, you know, the proof of the pudding is is one I prepared earlier. If I go to my E uh temp was on the temp temporary updates and i said fm3 they are 13th of the uh so that's the folder so it's extracted out that's 5.44 and then i just go and manually copy it where i need it to go yeah well that's what updated can do oh yeah pretty you're, much automatically I'm first customer yeah. online for it um because it's something you know I, I'm, I'm any one time i'm probably tracking a dozen, maybe fifteen different Clarion builds. Right. No, I like this. This, this, I couldn't quite figure out how to do this, but now um, I think we know how to do this. Okie dokie. Cool. Yeah, that's good. So when when you run your installer, you would have to you would have to manually tell it though which one you'd have to go to, unless I can pass the path into the installer. I'm going to give you the ability basically to uh, to do that because it's okay. something that I, how I, how I work. So I'm going to give you the ability to, yeah. there's two paths. One's your, your root Clarion and then right. the installer should know to put, I know ours do, and I'm pretty confident KSOFs and, and many others will to be fair and Mike's as, as well. They know if you've got your base, your, your root folder is Clarion 10, then it would be Clarion 10 slash accessories slash so on and so forth. And if it was Clarion 10, like doesn't really break anything I can show this, there's my Clarion 10. So I have I have a Clarion folder, as you can see here, Clarion. Oh, and these are all stored in Dropbox just for good measure. So that it synchronizes against all the different machines, so everyone's in right. sync. So okay, but you got so you got Clarion, and under Clarion 10, you can see here there's four different versions under there as well. So I store my my Clarion 10s all under Clarion 10. So I've got my base Clarion 10, and then I have different projects, if you will, and so on and so forth. Right. Yeah. Uh, but that uh, so I'll schedule it is nothing more than yeah the Clarion 10. I think we could do this. I just kind of glanced through the setup builder docs and it just, it says basically that you can pass parameters in um, using the name of the variables that you want to fill. And those variables are pretty standard. You know, mm -hmm. install path is a standard variable on their side. I would guess examples are too. Yeah, this, that'd be really cool. We could just go through tag four different 
versions and say install and then you you just did it for four of them done yeah wouldn't actually matter well i do too i do claire in 11 and 10. i mean i would just take both of those and just hit it once and it'd be done hmm. the only thing you might want to do is you wouldn't want it to register the template uh right. setup builder could right. do but in that scenario you wouldn't want it to because it'd be ready to like... template in your temporary right. folder you wouldn't want that so uh you would need to register the template yourself uh but i don't know if you can do that by the command prompt um if it's an existing template okay. then it's fine you just yeah, overwrite it's it it's not a problem you could even have an app open and just copy over it and it'll still work you just have to close the app and reopen it um so you really wouldn't have a problem it's just um new template for first edition you know for first ad Doable though. Okay. Doable. There you go. I've now called you the word. Now, who, now who's given someone word? Yeah. Right. <laughs> so, so. Brilliant idea. Love it. I love get, it. Get my own back for everyone calling yeah. me work. <laughs> right. <laughs> on that note, until next week. What well, it's you know what it's it's a little uh, you know back and forth here. I'm saving you time. You save me time. There you go. That's right. the whole point of these things. It's definitely the whole exactly. point in, in my mind anyway. Exactly. Cool. All Brilliant. right. You know what? I'm going to go and uh, work on that right now. <laughs> cool. That's... I'm going to. Uh, I'm going to actually continue on that PHP script, which is the API. Um, okay. Yeah, I'm going to finish uh, finish some of that off. So. That's okay. Cool. Thank you, everybody. All right. Until next week. Um, I'll see you then. Bye, everybody. Cheers. Bye.